Texas has almost 25 megawatts of installed wind energy, enough to power 6 million homes. By contrast, Green Energy California has only 5 megawatts, one-fifth the power generation capabilities of Texas. It was reported that no less than four times the USS Lexington had been sunk. Tokyo Rose nicknamed her the Blue Ghost because she just kept coming back. I think the blue paint helped a lot too. Just an old soldier. Just an old soldier. And nobody cares. The friends that he fought with. Shoulder to shoulder are all gone now. Yeah. Just an old soldier. A short trip upstairs. Really steep stairs takes you to the flight deck. Up here we found some really nice old and new aircraft to check out. today as they were moving some aircraft around and we got to watch that. Uh-oh, looks like some of those Antifa pukes. Imagine being a 17-year-old kid, just left home for the first time, and you're assigned to the 5-inch, 25-caliber anti-aircraft gun. One wrong move, and you could easily lose an arm or your life. Another couple flights of stairs takes us to the bridge. This is where we learned that the first commander of the USS Lexington was Felix Stump from Parkersburg, West Virginia.
Looks like in this space they had the luxury of a two inch thick mattress. Six guys and a eight by eight space. engine room has an impossible amount of controls and knobs and levers. This is where my dad spent a lot of his time when he was aboard the aircraft carrier. Just an old soldier Just an old soldier Just an old soldier Number four, turning 108 RPM for answering standard bell. All stop. The chief is here. Hi, and welcome to Lexington's aft engine room. This is the throttle board for the aft starboard turbine. The Lexington was powered by one of the most efficient and dependable propulsion systems ever installed in the United States Navy. On the other side of this bulkhead is the fire room, which is where the steam is produced to power the turbines. We use steam because we can take seawater turn it into fresh water, then convert the water to steam, and use the energy from the steam, and then reuse the water, reducing dramatically the amount of fuels the ship has to carry. There are eight boilers in the four fire rooms, and four high-pressure and four low-pressure turbines in the two engine rooms. The Lexington is propelled by four 15-foot diameter propellers on 20-inch shafts. Turbine engines are relatively simple, with a closed-loop system of water and steam to drive the turbines. The steam with a pressure of 600 psi at 850 degrees is piped into the high pressure turbines where it expands through circular rows of blades. The steam then goes through the low pressure turbine where the steam expands in both directions to balance the thrust. In both turbines, the revolving blades turn the propeller shaft at up to 265 revolutions per minute while developing 150,000 horsepower total. While underway, four persons were required to operate each side of this engine room. That is all. Carry on. It's hard to imagine how these ships had everything necessary for the ship to be maintained and for the comfort of the crew. Huge kitchens, barber shops, dental offices, libraries, movie theaters, and some of the best medical care available. Just an old soldier. Just an old soldier. Just before we left, we saw mention of a sister ship to the USS Lexington, which was the USS Philippine Sea. This was one of 24 Essex-class aircraft carriers of the United States Navy and the first ship to be named for the Battle of the Philippine Sea. She was launched on September 5, 1945 at the end of World War II. And this is the aircraft carrier my dad served on in the Korean War. Well, after a hard day of walking around and checking out cool stuff, we made it back to Rockport and stopped at Moondogs for a beer. We got here just in time to watch all the oyster boats come in and unload their cargo, which was really cool. I have no idea why Peg wanted me to sit in this one bar stool all day. Does this thing make my butt look big? If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us online for our travel blog at Searching for Solitude. Thanks.